Hello students, welcome to CS Academy. In this session, I will discuss with you the most important assumptions that are made in theory of simple bending. Okay, in that uh, the first one is uh, material of the beam is homogeneous and isotropic material. Okay, here to understand the physical meaning of uh, homogeneous and isotropic, let us consider one cubical structure like this. In a cubical structure like this this is the cubical structure and in that cubical structure I am considering three points I am considering three points like this that is the point 1 and let us consider this is point 2 and let us consider this is point 3 okay here let us consider the material properties are like a Young's modulus bulk modulus shear modulus are like a different properties are also there here uh, among them I am just considering one uh, property that is a uh, Young's modulus here. Okay, let us consider the Young's modulus uh, for this uh, cubical structure at point one in x direction is e x one. Okay, here this is the x direction, this is y direction, and this is z direction. Okay, and if you see the Young's modulus of this uh, body at point one in x direction is e x one. Okay, if you see in y direction that is uh, e y one. And in z direction that is uh, e z1 okay that is at point 1 the Young's modulus in x direction is e x1 and Young's modulus in y direction is e y1 and Young's modulus in z direction is e z1 similarly if you see in two second point that is also e x2 e y2 and e z2 similarly here also e x3 e y3 and e z3 okay here to understand the concept of homogeneous and isotropic I will write uh, like this the first one is uh, homogeneous homogeneous material okay homogeneous material here for homogeneous material the condition is e x1 equal e x2 equal e x3 okay from this condition I will define the homogeneous materials please listen carefully here from this condition I will explain the homogeneous material okay here what is the E E is nothing but of material property okay the material property is equal I am equating 3 yes or no in x1 and x2 and x3 that means at different points okay at different points in a particular direction the direction is x direction okay or we can also write it as y e y1 that is called e y2 that is called e y3 okay here in y direction all material properties are equal yes or no like that the the definition i am uh, defining here the material property okay the material property here i am considering the Young's modulus the material property is same okay same means i am equating that is same the material property is same okay at all points whatever i am considering the points here point 1 2 3 at all points that is 1 comma 2 comma 3 1 comma 2 comma 3 in particular direction in particular direction that may be in x direction or in y direction or in z direction okay here we can also write it as e z1 equal e z2 equal e z3 that is the property that is Young's modulus or shear modulus whatever it may be the material property is the same at all points in a single direction in a particular direction okay that property is called homogeneous okay if uh, this condition is satisfied satisfied by the material then that material is called homogeneous material okay i hope you got the point here and the second one is uh, isotropic material okay isotropic means here for isotropic also i will write one condition isotropic material okay for isotropic material the condition is e x1 equal e y1 equal e z1 that means at a single point at a single point that is if you take a first point you can also write this as e x2 equal e y2 equal e z z2 and e x3 equal e y3 equal e z3 that 
like this at a single point the material property that is the material property is uh, same in all directions that is x direction y direction z direction okay if i define uh, for isotropic material this is the condition i can define like this the material property that is x more or less is same in all directions all directions that is x direction y direction z direction in all directions is same in all directions at a at a particular point at a particular point that is first point or second point or third point okay if you remember these two points we can easily define the homogeneous and isotropic materials if this condition is satisfied by the material that material is called isotropic material okay i hope you got the point here here the condition is the material of the beam is homogeneous and isotropic okay here i defined homogeneous material and isotropic material separately but uh, to the assumption in this theory of simple bending is uh, the material should satisfy both homogeneous and isotropic so for that the material should possess uh, both these properties that means both the, both these conditions if any material satisfy this both conditions then that material is called homogeneous and isotropic material okay this is the first assumption in the assumptions made in the theory of simple bending okay and the second assumption is the value of x modulus of elasticity that is e is the same in both tension and compression okay here if you see the beam is like this okay if i apply the bending moments on the both sides like this the beam will deflect like this the beam will deflect like this okay this is compression zone and this is the tensile zone okay this is nodal axis let us consider this is the beam whenever i am applying the bending moments or load at center the beam will bend like this okay the beam will bend like this yes or no this is the tens the compression zone and this is the tensile zone here the angst modulus of elasticity is same in both tension and compression here he is telling that here whatever the angst modulus is present here here also the same angst modulus is present okay this is one of the assumption in the theory of simple bending and if you see the next assumption that is the transverse sections are plane before bending and remain after bending also okay here he is telling the transverse sections transverse in the sense that it is a perpendicular to the what longitudinal axis okay here uh, i am considering one beam like this this is the longitudinal axis okay if i draw in a 3d like this okay this is the 3d diagram of beam okay this is uh, the plane which is perpendicular to this longitudinal axis this plane is called a transverse section okay if you see this is the beam like this 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 one this is the transverse section okay this is the transverse section and uh, the longitudinal axis is present here and uh, this plane which is perpendicular to this longitudinal axis these planes are called transverse sections okay these transverse sections were a plane before bending and after bending he is telling that if a beam will bend like this beam will bend like this if you see here let us consider the beam will bend like this okay if i draw 3d form like this 3d form like this see here how i am drawing 3d form like this okay and uh, we have to join these two okay this is the transverse section this is the transverse whatever the transverse section present here after bending also the transverse section remains plane okay remains same position this is the this is the assumption of the third one in the theory of simple bending okay i hope you got this point here here before bending the transverse plane whatever the position it is having after bending also the plane is the same as the before bending okay and the next most important assumption is the beam is initially straight and longitudinal filaments bend into circular arcs with a common center of curvature okay here if we see the physical meaning of this assumption here the first uh, the beam is like this okay and the, uh, the planes uh, which are uh, straight uh, before bending okay and here after bending what is he is telling let us consider this is the bending like this okay this is the bending like this here there is some point of center 
where we consider this uh, radius of curvature like this okay and here this uh, subtler arcs uh, these are the subtler arcs here these two are subtler arcs and uh, some of other uh, subtler arcs, arcs are also there inside the beam like this and these all subtler arcs are having same center of curvature that is O okay this is the important assumption here and the next one is the radius of curvature is large when compared with the dimensions of the cross section here this is the radius of curvature it is very large dimension it is having okay this is the radius of curvature and the next important assumption is beam is a straight before loading remains a straight after after load is removed okay if we consider that this is the let us consider this is the beam okay if we apply load the beam will deflect like this okay if we apply load the beam will deflect like this after removing the load the beam because of this elastic nature because of this elastic nature the beam will become the straight one okay this is the assumption here beam is straight before loading and remains straight even after load is removed okay that is the deformation which is occurred in the beam is not a permanent one that is the deformation which is occurred in the beam is not permanent one okay it is a temporary in nature and the next assumption is beam is stressed within elastic limit okay within elastic limit and follows hooke's law what is hooke's law tells the stress is directly proportional to strain sorry strain okay stress is directly proportional to strain and uh, this beam will follow this hooke's law okay this is the important assumption and the next assumption is a beam is subjected to pure bending beam is subjected to pure bending okay this assumption is very important in the theory of pure bending here pure bending means there is only bending that is as shear stress is zero okay shear stress is actually in beams uh, whenever the uh, load is acting like this the beam may have chances of shearing like this okay here let us consider this is the total beam let us consider this is total beam whenever load is acting here the beam will shear like this okay the shear like this okay and uh, but here we are assuming that the shear stress is zero okay there is no any shear stress that is nothing but of called we are pure bending okay to understand the physical meaning of this pure bending i will consider one beam like this i will consider one beam like this with supports these two are supports and load is acting like this okay and this is the point a point b point c and d okay if i draw shear stress distribution sorry the shear force diagram here shear force diagram this is the shear force diagram here okay here in between b and c because of this loads and supports are cancel in between this b and c shear force is zero okay shear force is zero this section that b and b to c this section is called a pure bending area pure bending area here if i draw the bending stress bending uh, uh, moment diagram like this these are the sections okay and the bending stress bending moment diagram will be like this okay this area is having pure bending moment this area is having pure bending moment this is the about the pure bending moment this is very very important assumption in the theory of pure bending and if you see the next important assumption that is uh, the layers at neutral axis does not take part of bending okay does not take part of bending here the neutral axis means here the axis which is having a stress is zero and the strain is zero whenever the stress and strains are equal to zero that axis is called neutral axis and the plane which is having that is plane is called neutral plane okay in bending and the next assumption is each layer of the beam is free to expand or contract and independent on the above or below layers okay to understand this uh, assumption i will take one experimental view here let us consider this is the beam of, uh, of this shape and here this beam is having a number of uh, layers uh, like this number of layers like this and whenever i am applying the load uh, the beam will deflect like this okay the beam will deflect like this here if we consider the number of layers here see let us consider this is one layer and this is another layer and the expansion or contraction of this layer will not depend on this one but actually in practically the expansion or contraction of each layer will depend on the adjacent layers but here we are assuming that the expansion or contraction of this uh, layer which is independent on the adjacent layers this is very important assumption in the 
theory of pure bending these are the all assumptions in theory of pure bending and if you see again the all the assumptions the first one is the material of the beam is homogeneous and isotropic and the second assumption is the value of Young's modulus of elasticity is same in both tension and compression and the third assumption is the transfer sections uh, which were plane before bending and remain plane after bending and this is the third assumption if you see the next assumption the beam is initially straight and the longitudinal filaments bend into the circular arcs with a common center of curvature okay and the next assumption is the radius of curvature is large compared with the dimensions of the cross section and the next one is the beam is straight before loading and the remains straight after when load is removed okay and the next assumption beam is stressed within the elastic limit and it follows hooke's law and the next important assumption in a theory of pure bending is a beam is subjected to pure bending that is a shear stress is zero and the next assumption the layers at nodal axis does not take part of bending action and the last most important assumption is each layer of the beam is free to expand or contract and independent on above or below layers okay these are the total 10 assumptions are there and uh, you can see some of other assumptions also but these 10 are very very important assumptions and uh, many books uh, in many books they wrote directly the assumptions they won't explain clearly okay that's why to understand clearly i make i make this video and i hope uh, it is useful to you and uh, please subscribe my channel like and share the videos and thank you for watching my video thank you